Now that you've looked at using convolutions to improve your classification of images or computer vision, let's take a look at going beyond the simple MNIST images to use more realistic content, larger color images where the subject isn't necessarily centered. Previously, when using MNIST or Fashion MNIST, it was very simple for you to get the data. You simply loaded the data set and it gave you a set of training images and labels and the same for validation images and labels. You did this by just saying MNIST equals tf.keras.datasets.fashion underscore MNIST. And then you would load the data from it. It was a nice luxury to have two lines of code to give you your data, but it's not always that simple. Let's take a look at another example where we will actually load data from an external data set. <clears throat> One useful data set for learning is the horses or humans data set, which is over 1,000 images that are 300 pixels by 300 pixels in full color of horses and humans in various poses. Note that unlike MNIST or Fashion MNIST, they're not centered in the frame and they're not the only content. So for example, there's background content like beaches, trees, skies, and so on. A methodology for hosting data sets in TensorFlow uh, for this is to create directories containing the images and they'll be labeled based on their pa parent directory. So your training data set can be in one directory with subdirectories for the images and the labels will be the names of the folders. So we can have training images for humans in a humans folder and training images for horses in a horses folder. And similarly for validation, we can have folders for horses and humans, and within them have the validation images. In TensorFlow, you can use the image data generator to turn directories like this into a trainable pipeline. It's imported with code like this from tensorflow.keras.preprocessing. The image data generator can perform images, or can perform processing on the images. So for example, we need to normalize the images, which we did by dividing by 255. So we can do that as an initialization on the image data generator. And then we can create a training generator by flowing uh, from the directory of images. You tell it the path of the directory containing the training images the target size of the image. So if they are of different sizes, the generator will resize them to this. We'll design our neural network to take in 300 by 300 pixel images. In, this, in the case of horses or humans, this is the default size. Training can be done in batches. So we'll take batches of 128 images at a time. The final parameter is the class mode where there can be two different types, binary, where there are two classes, such as horses and humans, and categorical, where there are more than two. This is horses or humans with two classes, so we'll set the class mode to be binary. Similarly, the validation data can have a generator made for it, and we point this to the directory containing the validation images. Now we can explore our model architecture. We have large images containing complex features, so this network will certainly look more sophisticated than usual. We'll do this with four layers of convolutions and each with an associated pooling. Our input shape is 300 by 300 by three because our images are 300 by 300 and they are in color with three channels. Finally, we have our output layer. Uh, we have two classes, which would normally be two output neurons, but another option is to use a single neuron and set the activation function to sigmoid. This will pull the output value towards zero for one class and towards one for the other. It's another option you can use if you only have two classes. As always, we compile our model specifying a loss model and an optimizer. In this case, we can try a different optimizer, RMS prop, 
which stands for root mean square propagation. It's good to experiment with different ones. And now we will do our model.fit and we can inform it to use the generators for training and validation data. For training data, we can specify the training generator that we set up earlier. We don't need to specify a parameter name. Uh, as we batch our data, we can specify how many steps we want to take with each step loading a batch. A training step is one gradient update. In one step, batch size samples are processed and epoch consists of one full cycle through the training data. This is usually many steps. As an example, if you have 2000 images and you use a batch size of 10, an epoch consists of 200 steps. So in this case, we'll be binning our training data in eight batches. The gradient is updated after each step and after all eight batches are processed, we have made one complete pass through the data set. We can pick the number of epochs to train. To try things out, we can train on a few epochs, say 15. For validation, we just pass the generator for, for the validation data and it can perform the validation for us uh, during the training process. Validation data is also in batches, so we can specify how many steps per epoch we want to take in with the validation data. After training for about 15 epochs, we can reach a pretty good accuracy on both the training and validation sets. This is a small data set, so don't be lulled into a false sense of security that it's 100% accurate for all horses or human images, but it's in good shape. Next up, you can try the code for yourself. Play with the parameters, add or remove layers, try different values for neurons or numbers for filters. You might be able to improve the model or even speed up the training. 